come to me, all you who are weary and heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. For I am gentle and humble of heart. All the Pearson family here. Mama Jean and Buddy's nine children, 19 grandchildren, 15 great grandchildren. And not only here, but those, some from far distances in the family, who are with us by streaming. We're all together with Father Brian Timby. Deacon Eddie Coons, we're here. And longevity of life does not dispense us of sadness. And we're here to be with you in the sadness. But sisters and brothers all, sharing in that grief, I'm very happy for Mama G. Last Tuesday, when Mama G passed to eternity, she experienced in a way that she nor we could ever imagine. There's an image that, that one of you have of Mama G that when you would have to get up in the early light of not in the nighttime at home, your parents' bedroom door would be open, the lamp always on, and Mama Jean would be in a rocker, holding one of you as a baby. And now in eternity, as Jesus has shown us that he is gentle and humble of heart. Mama Jean is now in God's embrace, knowing in a way that she could never have imagined God's love for her. And she's sharing in that joy now. When Adam, the third of Sarah and Tim's children, when he was baptized, it was at the cathedral in Memphis, and I was there. And that morning before the baptism, Mama Jean was brought by wheelchair on the other side of the church by the ramp brought up there. She was in a wheelchair because a few months earlier, Mama Jean had that open heart surgery, a grave surgery. And it just so happened that I was driving back from Nashville and I dropped by Jackson General. And remember, we were all in the ICU waiting room with Mama Jean's life. And we all joined hands. And we prayed to the God in whom Mama Jean believed that God would take care of her. And so, a few months later, still in the wheelchair then, Mama Jean came into the cathedral and I was on the other side. And as soon as she saw me, Mama Jean yelled out, Father Val, I want you to do my funeral. <laughs> now this is, a, this is an Adam's baptism. And we, we all laughed. We all laughed. But I can tell you, without knowing it, Mama Jean was on to something. Her funeral and a baptism.
May 10th, 1931. Fourteen days after Mama Jean was born. Her parents brought her and she was baptized on that date at the old St. Mary's on Baltimore Street. And their home, literally less than a stone's throw from the church. And sisters and brothers all, at the beginning of the funeral mass, the church instructs us to gather at the baptismal font as we did. And the first thing that the priest does is sprinkle the casket with baptismal water. And then, as the grandchildren did, cover Mama Jean's casket with a white garment. It's done to remind us of what was celebrated at Mama Jean's baptism more than 90 years ago. And Mama Jean is understanding now what that consecration meant. At her baptism, we celebrated that she was redeemed in the blood of Jesus. That she, baptism celebrated an adopted daughter of God's family. But more than that, much more reckless on God's part. Fourteen days old, God promised a share of the inheritance with Mama G. Never learned, but always gifted. So today, we celebrate that inheritance promised at her baptism. And as a disciple, Mama G carried out her vocation together with her buddy. And you, her children, purposely chose that reading from the book of Proverbs about a lofty wife in partnership with her husband. Because that spoke to you about that marriage. And how challenging it was when Mama G on Baltimore Street, because Buddy and she loved each other, began to craft that marriage, went way out into the farmland. <laughs> Her life changed. And as they crafted this family at their farm, oh, one of you has an image that on a muggy summer morning, just as sunrise, they would look out the window and Mama Jean was sitting on the other side of the bucket at the, the garden, the rose of the garden. She was wearing overalls and a, a hat. And she was going up and down the roads picking the beans for the meals. As, as the Book of Proverbs says, Mama Jean never ate the bread of the idols. So she was preparing canned vegetables, jams, and jellies. Because she fed you a family of 11, but not just you. At noon time, every workday, Mama Jean fed all the farm workers with a big meal. Oh, that was her vocation. And as one of you said, she was always laughing. That's what I remember, Mama Jean. At Thanksgiving, when she would have the banquet for all of him, Buddy knew someone whose wife was an invalid. And he had Mama Jean make the dinner for them. And he would drive it over 
and leave it for the family. As one of you said, and I quote, food was daddy's love language and mama helped him speak it. And then one of the high points is when when your father decided that y'all needed to go to Natchez Trace once a year, and you all would go together, and it was it was little old cabins then, it was just two rooms, but y'all loved it, and Mama Jean prepared all the food there, and on Sunday mornings, the sunrise. Mama Jean would wake up all of y'all <laughs> and y'all would drive back to the home, get dressed up, drive to St. Mary's and be on time for 7 a.m. Mass. <laughs> and then all of y'all would drive back to join Buddy at Natchez Trace. Yes, her faith in God, Mama G wanted to instill in all of us. As Maria read from St. Paul, although our outer selves are wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. Beth, when you would come in and bring mail to Mama Jean, you would find her in her chair, reading her Bible, praying her prayer. And you all knew if you were going to call Mama Jean, you couldn't call her between 2 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You know why. Oh, Mama Jean would be watching EWTN, and she would be praying the rosary and all the prayers. That was her time, and you couldn't call her. Oh, what a, what a testimony she gave us quietly. And even in these final months, She would mouth the prayers as best she could. And she kept trying to make the sign of the cross. Oh yes, today we gather. And I'm happy for Mama Jean. Because she's experiencing what she never fully knew, nor shall we of the love of God embracing her and Jesus showing in heaven how gentle and humble of heart. What a joy for her. And in that, today, we commend Mama Jean to that embrace of her